All right. Is anyone glad to be in Sunday morning church? Well, that's good. Thanks for being here. This is going to be a great morning. It has been a great morning already. And, uh, but anyone ready for the Word of God? Amen. Well, I'm going to pray and uh, then we're going to get into it. Would you stand and pray with me? Lord, I just thank You so much, God, for what You're about to do, what You're already doing. Lord, we thank You for the church, Lord, that You're building. Lord, I just pray for these next few moments that You would speak, God, through Your Word. Show us who Jesus is this morning. We wanna be changed. We wanna be different. We wanna not walk out of here the same, God. So I pray for every single person and this Word in Jesus' Name, I pray. And everyone said together, Amen. Why don't you give yourselves a round of applause and grab your seats. You can stay with me, Adam, if that's okay. And I think we need to give it up for Adam Dodson because he's about to endure the service standing on his feet, which he's so blessed by. And uh, he's going to help me preach this morning. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to 1 Samuel 16. 1 Samuel Samuel 16. And uh, if you don't have your Bible, it's gonna come up on the screens for you. Are you glad to be in church? Good. It reads like this. It's the story of uh, David being chosen as the next king of Israel. (coughs) Samuel is um, the prophet of God. God has chosen Samuel to deliver his word and reveal who the next king of Israel will be. God instructs him to go to this man Jesse's house and to listen for God's voice because he's about to reveal to him, Samuel, who the next king is. We pick it up from verse 7 of 1 Samuel 16 and says this, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. See, people look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Verse eight, it then says, then Jesse called Airbnb, Abinadab, and had, I thought that was funny. Thanks, Grammy, for laughing. I worked on that one all day, okay? And had him pass in front of, some of you actually thought it said Airbnb, did you? And had him pass in front of Samuel, but Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shema pass by. (laughs) I was waiting for you to do that, Magoo. But Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one either. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, nah, not this one either. I mean, this is crazy. So he asked Jesse, look, are these all the sons you have? And Jesse replied, there is still the youngest, He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, we'll send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. Verse 12. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had fine appearance and handsome features. The Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. I love verse 13. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, Underline this, and from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. If you're looking for a title for this message, call it God's Signature. God's Signature. See, there's something powerful about a a signature is, is it gives you full access. It gives you full authority to act on someone's behalf. That's why you gotta be careful of what you're signing over. You gotta read through the document because when you sign something over, you give full authority for that person to act on your behalf. I hope that's speaking to you for a moment because when it comes to God and His purposes, His signature is on our life because of what Jesus did on the cross 2,000 years ago for us. And we now have full authority to act on His behalf and where there needs to be healing, we command healing. Where there needs to be provision and favour and His grace, we walk in His authority, not our authority because of God's signature over our life. 
this story I'm about to tell you. You can't make this up because a few months ago, I was um, sleeping in Southern California. It's in the middle of the night. And it was in Southern California. Laura was away somewhere and uh, I was asleep. And then I was all of a sudden in the middle of the night, awoken by a violent shaking of my bed. Like my bed shook like crazy. And so I was, I was woken up in a fright and I was like, what is going on here? And then my mind immediately went back to when I was about 12, 13, I heard this story from a preacher. He was a man of God and he talked about how he was woken up with a violent shaking of his bed. And I thought, oh my goodness, this, 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 is, this is what's happening to me. He talked about how the devil turned up on, at his bed and shook his bed to wake him up. And then he had this conversation with the devil and he rebuked him and he's like, devil, no, you, this is not happening. And he rebuked the devil and he started speaking and, and the devil, the, 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 the devil, never said the devil so many times in church. The, 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 the devil. The devil, the devil. He, he, he stopped. The guy just went back to sleep like nothing had happened. And I thought in that moment where my bed was shaking, I was like, oh my goodness. This is my moment. I'm a man of God. God's chosen me. Oh my goodness, this is it. This is it. Okay. So I, you know, I said something like under my covers, I see dead people. No, I, I was just like, where are you going with this, Togsy? Stay with me. No, I need to stop. The, the people came here for church. Okay. And I started speaking out. I started rebuking the devil. I said, devil! Not today, devil, not today. I see the night. No, I, I, I just said, devil, stop right there. And I started rebuking, I started praying in faith and I took full authority because I knew that God's hand was on my life. Well, I'll tell you this story to say that I woke up the next morning and uh, I went to grab my phone, you know, to, to read the Bible first. And uh, <laughs> as I'm, yeah, I'm flicking through the Word. And, and then once I was done with being invested into and the Spirit was on me, and then I flicked over to the news and I had found out in Southern California, in the middle of the night, what I had experienced was not the devil at all, it was a little earthquake happening in my room. Now, some of you are like, okay, where's the relevance in this? And actually, I don't even know, but I'm joking. Sometimes when things do come to shake up your world, when things do turn up and shake up your finances, shake up who you are, shake up what you're going through, things will turn up. Life has this way of throwing things at you and shaking up your world. I pray as a church, I pray as individuals, as marriages, our first reaction wouldn't be to go look away and be in fright, but to take authority over everything that comes our way taking authority when it comes to our family, taking authority when it comes to sickness, standing on the Word of God, proclaiming His promises, going, God, I have Your signature on my life. I have Your blood on my life. I have the Holy Spirit on my life. And so I'm gonna speak Your signature over this family, protection and provision and failure. And sometimes we've gotta stand up, be on the front line rather than retreat and run. That would be on the front saying, I take authority over this. God's signature over our life. Signatures are powerful. I found this out the hard way when, uh, when I was in school. Uh, I used to, for some reason, get a lot of detentions. Not sure why. And uh, detentions is where you have to stay back, stay back after school. And uh, you could get out of a detention if your parents wrote a letter to the school saying, you know, my kid can't be there. So I thought that's a brilliant idea. Except my parents didn't know that I was writing the letters for them. Till one day I was just chilling out at home. You know how your parents call out to you and it's just that tone, you know? Sometimes for some of you, they, they say your full name and you just know it's about to go down, right? And, and my, my, I hear my dad call, you know, he's Fiji, he's probably here right now. Pita! <laughs> Found out that I had been forging. Young people, do not do this, okay? It, 
does not work out good for you. Trust me. See, the enemy, Genesis 3, forging God's signature over people's lives here, trying to put his mark on your life. Condemn, judge. Genesis 3, did God really say? The truth is we walk around our society today and this is exactly what we're doing, being marked by what the enemy or the society that we live in and they label us and we walk according to their signature. But no, today is the day where we say no, we walk according to God's signature. He has full authority over my life. Nothing else, doesn't matter who, doesn't matter what you call me, my authority comes from heaven and heaven alone. I hope you feel encouraged this morning that you do have full authority because of the finished work of Jesus. I love it because in Numbers, it puts it like this. I will put my name, it says in verse 27, Numbers 6, 27. So they will put my name on the Israelites, on us, on the chosen people, and I will bless them. I want you to look at Paul in, in Ephesians. He, he writes a letter to the Ephesians church. And in chapters one, uh, we're gonna look at verse 13 and 14. And, but I want you to understand something about Ephesian church. Paul writes to this church and the first three chapters are, got, have everything to do with everything we have because of the finished work of Jesus. What he had done on the cross, he talks about in the first three chapters, all the spiritual blessings. If you wanna sum it up in Ephesians 1 verse three, it talks about because of Jesus, we have the spiritual blessings. It pretty much sums up the first three chapters of Ephesians saying because of him, this is what we have available to us. We have blessing, we have this, we have that. And then the next three is because He lets us know who we are in Christ. The next three chapters, four, five, and six, is then all got to do with how we act and, and how we act out who we are. So He talks about who we are and then He says, this is how you are to act in the church when it comes to unity, when it comes to your marriage. And, and, but I wanna look at verse 13 and verse 14. Look at this real closely. I love how Eugene Peterson puts it in the message. He says this in verse 13. It's in Christ that you, once you heard the truth, the truth that Jesus had come, died, rose again, and believed it, the message of your salvation, found yourselves, look at this, home free, signed, sealed, and delivered by what? The Holy Spirit. Verse 14, oh, this, this, is, this is good. If you just came to church for this, I mean, you can pretty much get up right now after this verse and go. It's, it's pretty incredible. Don't do it. Stay here till the end. Okay. Verse 14, this signet from God is the first instalment of what's coming. A reminder. Remember, He's trying to remind us of everything we have because of Jesus. The signet from God is the first instalment of what's coming. A reminder that you will get everything God has planned for us. A praising and glorious life. Come on, we need to thank God for what He has done in our life. For, for Jesus dying on the cross for us. In other words, our lives are marked signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Spirit. See, through God the Father and through the completed work of Jesus Christ, when you hear the good news and when you hear the Gospel, when you hear that He has set us free, whom the Son has set is free indeed, who the Son sets free is free indeed. When you hear this message of truth, the Holy Spirit turns up and His anointing comes on you and He seals what God has always said, what Jesus completed. The Holy Spirit turns up and seals it over your life. The Greek word there for seal, and Eugene Peterson uses it, is shregizo. That's right, I study Greek, no big deal, whatever. Some of you are not laughing because you know I didn't. Right, okay. Shregizo, which means it gives this imagery of when a package was sent, a wax seal would seal the package to say and signed off, I approve of this content. I approve of this. Everything inside this container, everything inside this package, I approve of. Which means when the Holy Spirit turns up in our lives and He puts His signature, He puts God's signature over us, God is saying, I approve of everything in this person. I approve of everything in this person here. I, my signature is on them. I have marked them, I have sealed them, signed, sealed, you like my signature? Delivered. See, some of you need to understand God does approve of you because not because of anything you've done, but everything that Jesus has done for you and for me, He assigns us and He signs us off saying, I approve of you. Some of you are like, where are you going with this toxic? Well, look, let's look at David. David, a little shepherd boy, nicknamed Cheese Boy. 
because he took cheese to his brothers on the front line. Some of you are like, what is the cheese thing all about? And so David, in 1 Samuel 16, he is at the back of nowhere. Can, we, can, can, I, can I tell you what goes on in my head when I read the Bible? Is, is this cool? Okay. Jesse turns up to Samuel's house. Jesse opens the door. <gasps> it's the prophet of God. Hello, what are you here for? Samuel turns up, says, um, God sent me here to your house. It's a nice looking house. And uh, listen, the, the next king of Israel, God is about to do something new. Just might be one of your sons. So he turns up and he goes, oh, come in. Jesse pulls Samuel in. And he says, over here and gets into the lounge room. He fixes everything up. And he's like, oh my goodness, tell him the prophet is here. We're about to get the next king of Israel. It could be one of my sons. This is going to be incredible. So and Jesse says, listen, where, where, where are your sons at? He's like, um, Oh, Jesse's like, um, I'm about to get them out. Just wait there. He gets the first one out. Eliab! Eliab, he, Eliab walks out into the lounge room. Now, you've got to understand, Samuel is looking for the next king of Israel. The Bible says, if you read it in 1 Samuel 16, that these men that were walking through, the brothers of David, they looked the part. They looked outwardly like the king. They should have been the king because they had every, they possibly looked like Saul. But God wasn't wanting to do an old thing again. God was wanting to do something completely brand new. And sometimes we do look for the same thing and go, oh, well, that, this is what, this is the next thing. No, 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 God wants to do something completely brand new. And if that's a word for someone here, God wants to do something completely brand new, not more of the same old, same old. No, God is doing the brand new thing in our life. There is more for us. There is more ahead for us as a church. There is more ahead for you as an individual. There is more ahead for your marriage and your business. Not more of the same, but God is doing something new. So Eliab walks in, he struts in, he's the oldest and he looks the part and he just starts looking at Samuel in the face and he's like, what's up? Heard you're looking for a king, yo. It's in the Hebrew and, he, and he's like, Sss. how do you like the name King E? I mean, that's going to be really good right there. Samuel's back here. Jesse's looking at him going, this one? You know, it's kind of like those parents, you know how they scroll and they show you their family pictures and we all have to put up with someone showing us their family pictures like, oh, here we go. And like, this is what Jesse's doing. Like, do you, do you like this one? Samuel's like, in his prophet God voice, no, this isn't him. <laughs> Jesse's like, okay, let's bring, let's bring the next one in. Next guy comes in. You like that one, thank you. <laughs> Better done. He's like, is this him? And uh, he's looking, he's looking. And Ben Adab turns up and he's, he looks the part too. He's like, yeah, what's up? I could be the next king of Israel. <laughs> Samuel. No, not him either. Jesse calls in the next guy. Shama. What a name. Shama. I'm getting there, people, all right? Just, I'm enjoying this more than you are. This is incredible. Shama walks in. Shama's like, what's up? Oh, you guys are bad. Help me stay on track. Okay, church, we're in church. All right, Samuel's here. He says it's not this. He goes through seven of his sons and Samuel has the audacity to say, none of these guys. Samuel asks the question, is this all you have? Jesse almost forgot about the eighth son. Uh, yeah, there is, there is another guy. Uh, he's, but he's out the back and he's probably gonna be smelling like some sheep dung. You don't want to see him. Got a whole lot of waste and stuff on him. Sometimes that's how we see things. It's like God won't use them because they've got dung on their life. They've got things going on. They've got wastage in their life. God won't want to use them because they've got messy stuff going on. But God wants to use those people and He'll use the broken pieces of people to mend them, to bring hope to humanity. And Samuel's like, I, I, I want to see him. So he calls for David. David! 
David is out in the back, in the middle of nowhere, with everything, with his harp. <laughs> with everything, by we will shout, oh, your glory, by, yeah, with everything, with ba, 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 ba. Please, seriously, stop. Um, <laughs> David, your dad wants you. What you. Sure, anything for my dad. He turns up, he's like, hi dad, what do you need? This is how I see David. And <laughs> Jess is like, son, see that man over there? That's the prophet of God. He is looking for the next king of Israel. Wow, my name's David, nice to meet you. You're incredible, you're amazing. Right there. Samuel stands to his feet and he anoints the next new king of Israel. A few things I want you to notice in this passage of Scripture. Notice this, is God's signature was on David. Not where everyone noticed him, no. God's signature was in the unseen. Which is a problem for our generation because we wanna be seen. We want people to know how good we are. How great is the sandwich we just made and posting it to everyone and letting everyone know, look at the incredible cheese sandwich that I just made. We want everyone to see what we're doing. And if no one notices me, then disappointment, discouragement sets in. But where was David? He was at the back being diligent and faithful in the unseen with doing what his father had asked him to do. Perhaps that's a word for someone here. See, sometimes we crave the music, the lights and the platforms. Platforms, they don't build leaders. I tell you what, leaders are developed in the unseen, prepared in the unseen. Notice Jesus was anonymous for 30 years. He lived in anonymity for 30 years. He was being prepared. The Bible talks about Jesus. He was growing up. He was growing with men, with men in favour and in favour with God. And then 30 to 33, Jesus changes the world. See, sometimes we need to be okay with what is seed form. Yeah, it's not about everyone noticing it, but how many of us know God develops you in the darkness? Anyone remember uh, uh, photo development, right? I mean, some of you young people, you don't even know what I'm talking about. I see tears in your eyes because now you can just tweet and, and filter an image and you can send it off to someone in a matter of seconds. But there was a day when you would take it into the Photoshop. Remember this? And the guy would say, come back in a few days. <laughs> There's tears, I can see it, wildlifers. <gasps> really, Dad, this is what you went through? Absolutely. That photo would go through a dark, unseen process of being developed. Jeremiah 1.5 says, God snapped an image in us. He, when He created us, He knew us and He knitted us together in the womb. He set us apart and then we develop and we process and the image He snaps in, God develops over time. Like David in the unseen, God was developing a king. He was developing the next leader, the next Israel. Hey, you may be unnoticed, you may feel unwanted right now, but hey, God sees you and you are noticed and He wants you to know He is preparing you. It might look like seed right now. Your business might look like seeds right now. You might be on your knees wondering, how am I gonna get through this? because I'm not seeing the fruit I wanna see. God is doing something in you. God is doing something in your marriage. God is doing something in your family. It might look like seed, but keep going, keep preparing. Fruit is on its way. The second thing I want you to see is God's signature is not about what the world sees. It is about what God sees. See, everyone just saw, oh yeah, it's just a shepherd boy out the back. No, 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 no. God saw not just a shepherd boy, He saw a king. Oh, it's just, it's just the cheese boy delivering some food to his brothers. No, 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 no. You saw him as a cheese boy being annoying to his brothers, but God saw a warrior about to defeat a giant. Oh, everyone just saw this guy singing with the sheep out the back in the middle of nowhere. God saw a worshipper that would change worship and would write songs to worship. He saw, see, it is not about what everyone else sees. It is about what God sees. See, you might see your job as just, ah, it's just a nine to five. Just gonna get up, 
Same day, different stuff. This is it, like this is it. This is, this is me, nine to five. No, 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 that is an assignment. God sees that as an assignment. God, so you might go, well, this is just a season I'm stuck in. No, no, that is not just a season you're stuck in. God is gonna prepare you and He's doing something in the unseen. And yes, that job you're in right now, God is developing you and He's taking you from glory to glory, strength to strength. I pray that we would understand it's not about what others see, about what God sees. I think about our church. Oh, this is just church. We come in and we do our services. It's my religious duty at the start of the week and glory to God. And it's amazing, but this is more than just religious duty. This is us embracing God and saying and getting a sense of He's with me. Yes, things around me are not going too well, but I come. This is a church organism. This is, this is life right here. This is where we come together as a community. This is His bride. This is His. This is what He is building, the church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. This is the church. It is not what about others. See, see uh, let me illustrate this. Uh, you see, to you, to you, this is a boxing glove, right? This is just a boxing glove. It's cool. Some of you just see this in January at the start of the year and then we put them away. Thank you. Magoo, great service pastor, always supporting the preacher. Amazing. Give you five bucks later, it's amazing. This just looks like an ordinary glove. This just looks like an ordinary, it's nothing, it's just a boxing glove. But what if I told you, you saw it as just an ordinary, ordinary glove, but what if I told you the signature of Manny Pacquiao, one of the greatest boxers of all time. This is no longer just a glove anymore, huh? This is no longer just something that's on your shelf. No, now this, this increases in value. Now you can't just throw this around. You can't just leave this around because it's got the signature and the autograph of a well-known well all-time boxer. You see, that's the same with our life. What you see is ordinary. What you see is just mundane is not mundane at all. The signature of God is on that. And you need to understand, it's not just a nine to five. It's not just a business. It's not just putting a food on the table. It's not just raising up kids. No, you're raising up the next generation, raising them up to be men and women of God that where we will hand one day, hand the baton on to them and they will take charge and keep taking the church. Forward. See, the signature of God is not about what, careful with that. <laughs> it is about what God sees. I want you to write this down. The signature of God empowers us to walk in authority every day. Notice David, he, he, he didn't just get anointed and then run straight to the palace looking for his throne and his scepter. <laughs> Many, I guess, scholars believe that it wasn't between 10 to 20 years until he became king. Where did David go straight after his big God signature moment? I'll tell you where he went. Straight back looking after the stinking sheep. Went back to his normal everyday See, sometimes the problem is we have a God encounter moment and His signature is on our life and then we go looking for the palace moment. Where's the microphone? I'm ready to preach. Where's the music? Where's the lights? Come on, I'm ready to worship lead. Sometimes we look for the palace moments. We have God change our lives, speak to us about our family and then we run back to our family like, why are my kids still whinging? And why is he missing a sock as well? Like we, we get caught up because we think, oh, when we encounter God, it changes our circumstance. It doesn't necessarily change your circumstance. Oh, God can change your circumstance in a moment, but sometimes it takes long time to, for things to happen quickly. You see, what I want you to understand in this is he went back to looking after the sheep. You see, what he went back and he went back to the same old sheep, but someone different went back. See, we're going back to the same communities every week. We go back to the same families, the same marriages, hopefully same people, same friendships, same high school. But what goes back is someone who is marked, someone who is signed off, someone who is sealed and someone who is delivered. You see, it empowers us to walk with authority every day. So you should put your head up. You should pull your chest back and pull your shoulders back and go, you know what? I am called by God for such a time as this. I am on purpose. I'm living my life on purpose. I am here to make a difference in my world, in my sphere of influence. Wherever I am, wherever you've placed me, God, I'm gonna bring change. I'm gonna make a difference because your signature is on my life and this is it. 
What I want you to understand is that the signature of God, what the band can join me, the signature of God is it enables us to leave an imprint everywhere we walk. When David was anointed, and this is what I want you to catch here, because I believe Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 really goes well with verse 13 of 1 Samuel 16. Now look at this. They were anointed, he was anointed, kings and leaders. They weren't just anointed in that day where you know, they just got some baby oil and, and then just dabbed him on their head and said, Ooh, you're anointed now, you're a king. Go change the world. No, Old Testament Bible times, when they would anoint someone, they would pour oil from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. They would be absolutely soaking in oil. In Psalm 133, it talks about Aaron's beard. He, he, like it's, it's like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. This gives us imagery. When you are anointed, oil would drip. Now, if you've ever had oil stuck on you, you that, man, that, that stuff can be stuck on you for months, maybe years, if you don't have showers regularly. But nonetheless, when oil gets into your pores and gets into, it leaves an imprint. You can tell where someone who has been anointed, well, you can tell where they've been. They make a mark, they make an imprint everywhere we've been. I pray that we would be people that leave an imprint, that we'd leave an oily trail saying, God has been here before. God is here before because there's, there's kindness here and someone's showing grace here. We're called to not just be Christians who just focus on our four and no more. We're not called to be Christians that just get, get used to what's in the four walls of this church. No, we're called to reach and influence the world and leave an imprint on people's lives and understand we're gonna leave an imprint of His grace. We're gonna leave an imprint, not of judgment, not of, not of condemning people, but an imprint of His grace and His love in our high schools, in our families, wherever we are, leaving an imprint on His life. Look at verse 13, 1 Samuel 16. It says this, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not... No, it says Samuel, so Samuel took the horn of oil, poured, poured it out and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully among David. Remember what Ephesians says? Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. When you hear the message of truth, the Holy Spirit turns up. When you hear Jesus and what He's done, the Holy Spirit turns up and He seals. He signed and He seals and He delivers the anointing on our life. God's signature, the Holy Spirit turns up and He marks people's lives. I'll finish right here and then we're gonna pray and uh, get some lunch, which is gonna be cool. If I had um, a masterpiece here, uh, art connoisseurs, you may appreciate this, you may not either, because I'm not an art connoisseur. I go to the art gallery and I'm like, what are we looking at? This looks like my five-year-old druid. Anyway, beside the point, if I had a piece of art here, we're looking at it, we'd be amazed, it'd be amazing. But what takes that masterpiece and increases its value astronomically? What takes this masterpiece and changes the way we look at it is by the artist's signature. Sometimes, most times, you can't really see the signature on this art piece. But I can tell you right now, if I had a drawing here and I said, Michelangelo's signature is on this masterpiece, we'd be like, oh my goodness, that's incredible. Is it really? You can't see it. It doesn't mean it's not there. You can't see the signature of the artist, but this just took it. You know why they sign? You know why artists sign? It's a claim of ownership. This is my work. This is my masterpiece. It's saying I am fully satisfied with this piece of artwork. It's been completed, it's finished. It says this artwork has value. This artwork has value. And this artwork is finished. Huh. Ephesians 2, again, Paul reminding us in Ephesians, the spiritual blessing, letting you and me know that we are God's masterpiece. 
You are God's masterpiece. Your marriage is God's masterpiece. Your business is God's masterpiece. Your songwriting is God's masterpiece. This church is God's masterpiece. And He has put His signature over it. Why? Because we belong. We have value. He says it is finished because of what Jesus did on the cross 2,000 years ago. We do belong because God's signature is on your life. All that to say, walk out of here in authority. Walk out of here knowing that the Spirit of the Lord is upon you to preach the good news and leave an imprint. The Spirit of God is upon you to lead your family, to lead your business. And where you have experienced setback, where you have experienced turmoil, allow the Spirit of God to minister to you and allow Him to bring His peace and say, I'm right there and I'm right with you. The situation might be terrible, but I'm with you and my Holy Spirit is doing some new work in you. I am doing something new. So whoever I'm preaching to this morning, I pray that you would understand His grace, His Holy Spirit is with you. God, I thank You for what You're doing, what You've done, what You're about to do. May people know we have authority because You've signed Your grace. Holy Spirit, sign seal and deliver. I thank you for it, in Jesus' Name. You know, I um, just wanted to pray two groups of people and then I hand the service back to Sam. There's first group of people, I just had it in my heart and uh, um, you, you experience setback, disappointment. Maybe, I don't know, relationship, business is not moving the way you want it to. I really believe the Spirit of the Lord is here just to minister to you and pointing you to God, pointing you to Jesus. I'm with you. He's sealing, He's signing and He is sealing and delivering. I just feel like God wants to minister to those who are disappointed, discouraged. Hey, it's life, right? Life throws those challenges our way. But I just really feel God wants to allow His Spirit right now just to comfort you in this moment. If that's you, while no one's looking around, can we have our head bowed, our eyes closed? If that's you, I don't wanna embarrass anyone, just want everyone to just have their moment with God. Could you raise your hands high enough? Long? Yeah. Father, right now, do a work in them. People who are having disappointment, discouragement, setback, businesses, relationships, God, maybe in studies, in personal endeavours. Father, right now, Holy Spirit, sign their life. May they understand they have authority in You, God. And so I commit them to You. I thank You. Breakthrough is on the way. Good report is on the way. Healing is on the way. Provision is on the way. Favour is on the way, God. You have marked it. You have signed it and You have delivered it. Father, seal it right now. In Jesus' Name I pray. Amen. Last group of people, we do this every week in our church. We wanna give people a moment to respond to the good news of Jesus. If you wanna ask Jesus into your life, maybe at one time you did, but you know that you've walked away. Friend, today's the day of salvation. Give your life to Jesus. The good news is this, Christ still loved us. Even whilst we were messing up, making bad choices, Christ still was good to us and He saved us from our destruction, from our defeat. And He died on that cross for you and for me. Why? Because He loves you so much and He wants a relationship with you. I'm gonna count to three all over this place while heads are still bowed, eyes are closed. I'm gonna count to three. And if you're saying, yeah, Peter, would you lead me in this simple, powerful prayer? I wanna know Jesus. Maybe at one time you did, but you know in your heart, you walked away from Him. Friend, He never walked away from you. He wants to know you today. He wants relationship with you today. And today is the day where it all turns around. I'm gonna count to three. Every man, every woman in the foyers, whoever's watching through the link in the stream right now, parenting foyers, stop still. Do you know Jesus? I'm gonna count to three. Raise your hand high enough and long enough for me to see it and I'll include you in this prayer. You ready? One, two, three, all over this place. Thank you. Hands are being raised. Hands are being raised right throughout the auditorium. I'm sure whoever's watching through the streaming and in the parenting room, hands are being raised. Even if you don't raise your hands, friends, it's all good. God sees your heart. Remember, He looks inwardly at the man, at the woman, and He says, come on, give your life to me. This is amazing. You can put your hands down. There's one big church family. Let's say this prayer together. If you, say, if you raise your hand just now, I want you to say this from the bottom of your heart. Dear Jesus, this morning, I surrender all. I give You my life. You are my Lord and Saviour. I need You. So would You help me follow You for the rest of my days? In Jesus' Name, Amen, Amen, Amen. Come on, there was many hands, absolutely amazing. We love You and uh, 
There's a next step you can take from here before I hand it back to Sam. Uh, there's a, this is a Bible, it's a free gift. It's a beautiful Bible, magazine format. And there's gonna be people, once the service is dismissed, out in the foyers, they're gonna be holding this Bible up. They're waving it around because they want you to come and start a conversation with them and say something like, hey, I prayed that prayer at the end. Can I have one of those Bibles? And they would love to put this Bible in your hand. There's a card on the back if you'd be willing, just so we can help you on this journey of getting started following Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. It's the most exciting thing you'll ever do. It's the best thing in following Jesus. And I tell you what, uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing, Amazing, amazing decision that, you, that you've made right now. So can we please congratulate those people one more time? Sam, amazing. Come on, let's put our hands together too for Peter. What a 